Hello folks and welcome at last to another workshop update. Now it's been quite a long time and if you follow my Instagram you'll have seen actually quite a lot has been done. So we've had the floor laid and the electrics all done. Unfortunately I couldn't film either of those. The floor because it's all epoxy and stuff and getting the cameras in there it's messy business and it's a little bit tricky to do all that. Uh, and the electrics obviously electricians are pretty expensive and I didn't really want to get in the way of them doing their work so I just sort of let them go at it and I'll be able to show you everything anyway. But today we have the first piece of major equipment arriving and that is the air compressor. Now in addition to the compressor itself we've also got a full air loop system going around the workshop which means I'll be able to hook up all the machines just there and then to different stations along with any other pieces of equipment that are going to be using compressed air which should be really practical and much better than what I've got in the workshop over here which is just my little 35 litre swan compressor. No we're going big we have a 22 kilowatt monster with a 500 litre receiver. So needless to say it's a pretty cool piece of kit and it's actually the first major machine in the workshop. So to that extent we're going to go to the workshop now uh, where we're going to catch up with H&M compressors and pumps who are busy installing the air system right now and hopefully we'll catch the delivery of the compressor. Now if that doesn't tickle your pickle, I don't know what will. Now one thing that doesn't always come across in the video of the individual parts that I'm still getting used to is just how big all this stuff is. I mean look at the size of the receiver compared with me. I mean it's absolutely huge and each one of these filters again they're complete units. So what we've got over here is the air compressor itself and that's a 22 kilowatt beast and deliver something like 120 CFM. So we're gonna have no problems on the air front. That then goes into the dryer. We've also got the oil separator down here and that's really important, keep everything nice and clean. And then we've got our 500 liter receiver with the two filters on either side. Now all this pipe works arranged in quite an interesting way. So what we've got is like a bypass system so that in case anything over here needs to be seen to replace or whatnot, we can actually keep the whole thing running. So this is a variable screw compressor. So this can just go straight into the air system without having to go through the receiver whatsoever. So that's actually really good. It means that if this needs to go down for whatever reason, maybe I need to empty it, change some seals or swap filters, then I don't need to take down the entire system and I can just keep going, maybe at a slightly reduced capacity instead. Now, of course, we have to have a bit of a chat about this floor because isn't it just absolutely beautiful? It just does so much for the space. Aside from my lovely squeaky shoes, it just makes the whole place so much lighter, brighter, and I think it adds an awful lot to the atmosphere. The finish is incredible. Now, in some areas, I might need to put down some uh, matting or surfacing just so that it's a little bit safer around, say, the coolant areas on the machines, but I just think it's just wonderful. 
And you know, the guys at EcoFloor put this down. They did it so fast and they went through all the difficulties that this floor had. So they did a fantastic job and I would thoroughly recommend them. I've got a link to them in the description down below. Definitely check them out if you're interested in doing any kind of resin flooring and especially if you're based around London. This is just a fantastic job and I think it's one of those things that down the line, I'm gonna be so glad that I went for the right stuff and did it properly. Now, the next thing on the agenda was getting a proper surface plate because the one I have in the little workshop is far too small. I wanna be able to put whole cases, even big ones on here so that I can take detailed measurements. And the thing is actually, they're quite difficult to find at the moment. I was trying to find ones from different brands uh, and different sizes and things, and they were all out of stock with huge lead times, many, many, many weeks. Um, so I managed to luck out a little bit. I got this 650 by 650 millimeter one, and it's about the right size, actually. It's almost perfect for this workbench. Now, this particular workbench, I think is pretty cool as well. So I wanted one that's going to be a bit mobile. So I want to be able to move it around the workshop quite easily. And that meant having wheels. Of course, the issue is that the wheels themselves aren't very precise. They can squidge and squeeze and move around the place even when you have brakes, especially when you have a lot of mass on top. So how do I get around that? Well, this particular workbench is pretty cool in that it has proper legs as well. So you can get it really level and it will just not move. This weighs so much, this weighs so much. When it's on its legs, it's a fully welded frame, so it's not gonna go anywhere, and so it should do a pretty good job. The other cool thing is I've got plenty of space here to be able to fit a laptop and something rather special that's gonna be going just here. Now, I'll reveal what that is in a few weeks because it's really, really cool, but I have to learn how to use it first. But if it all goes to plan, that can be quite the game changer for me and I'm really excited for it, so stay tuned for that. But of course that meant I needed to get a whole suite of different metrology tools. So I started off with some gauge blocks. Now, if you haven't seen a set of gauge blocks before, they are truly fascinating. So these little steel bars are precision ground to an incredibly tight tolerance, both in dimensionality, but also flatness. So the way they work is each one of them is ground to the nominal value that's on the box here. And the idea behind having a whole set of them is that you can combine a number of these blocks to create a very accurate measurement of any degree within the measurable confines of your set. So that means you can basically take three of these blocks and make almost any measurement within this sort of 100 to 150 millimeter envelope that this particular set that I have offers. Now, the really cool thing about them is that they're so incredibly flat that you can ring the blocks together. Now, one of the cool things about this is that no one truly knows exactly why this happens. You know, at the first glance, you might think it's something to do with the air pressure. When you push the blocks together, there's a vacuum in there. Well, no, because actually this works in space. Likewise, um, it could be, for instance, the van der Waals forces holding them together it's hotly up for debate and people are still researching it because it's quite an important piece of information to know. But what we know is that it works and it creates an incredibly tight tolerance on any measurement. And this allows you to do things like calibrate your measuring tools. The issue with any measuring tool, especially electronic ones, is that they can go out of spec. So you need to be able to confirm that all your measuring tools are properly within spec and calibrate it and you do so by using things such as these gauge blocks. Now this is great in both the CNC where you've maybe got a reddish shore probe or you might have a height gauge or in my case a very cool thing which I'm not going to tell you yet but I really need these for it. It's very exciting. Or alternatively just things like your calipers, micrometers and stuff like that. You want to be able to know that they're actually measuring the values correctly otherwise how will you ever know if you're hitting a tolerance? So they're quite important, and in a machine shop, these things are absolutely essential. Oh yeah, I also got an electric pallet truck. 
Aside from being insanely cool and the fact that I've always wanted one, there is a valid reason. I have a bit of a ramp outside of my roller shutter. And the problem with that is if I'm taking in something heavy and maybe it's wet outside and I've say I've got a big pallet of aluminium or something like that, I didn't feel comfortable with the idea of trying to heft up a regular pallet truck uh, at the risk of maybe it could just slide down, I could lose control, something like that. The good thing about this is I've got a bit of safety, I've got a brake, so it won't go hurtling down the ramp into somebody or a car or something. And at the same time, it just makes things a lot easier moving stuff around the workshop because now I just don't need to work as hard. Now, before I head on back home, I thought I'd fill you in on a few details. So you're probably wondering if you've come over from the BitTech channel, where have I gone? Well, this is now my new venture. I'm no longer the modding lead over at BitTech. I've passed that torch over to Alessandro Zaiti and his incredibly capable hands. Honestly, he is one of the most fantastic modders. His work is absolutely exemplary. And I can think of nobody better suited to take over the channel. So definitely lend him all your support. He is a fantastic modder and I wish him all the best. Now you may be wondering, of course, then why did I leave BitTech? Well, actually it's just because this whole venture is going to take up all of my time and I need to be able to put as much time as I can into developing my business, making sure that my products are as good as they possibly can be so that everyone who does purchase one gets what they deserve, a really rock solid product that they can depend on. And it's something that I want to be proud of. Of course, if you know me on Discord as well, I've been dealing with a house move, which is in itself a big renovation project. So dealing with a new workshop, a new house, there's an awful lot going on there. And as a result, my time has just been a bit stretched and of course, one thing sort of led to another. We got the floor in, which was great. And then straight after that, we got the air compressor in. And then of course, I needed the electrics done. And because all these things sort of rolled into another, we started getting tools in and I had to move things over here. And then I was dealing with the new house. And it's just an awful lot to deal with for just one person. So as a result, I've not really been able to put out the videos when I wanted to put them. However, I'm hoping that in the coming weeks when we've got this really cool stuff coming, I mean, literally just around the corner, there's some fantastic things arriving literally tomorrow. On top of that, it's not gonna be just a workshop. We're gonna be making stuff in here as well. So I'm hoping that as soon as I've got the uh, first machines up and running and we can really get things going, we can also start some proper making content. And it's gonna be really exciting getting to learn the new machines and the processes because I've never really been exposed to that level of machine before. And I think you're gonna be really excited by some of the projects that are gonna be coming out of here as well. For a start, we need to redo Aquacaris and actually finish it. And that's gonna be a big deal. And I wanna make it better and remove all the things that I was unhappy with in the original design, because a lot of that was built out of compromise. Well, those things I don't need to compromise on any longer. So I'm really excited to see where that will go. And I've also got smaller projects, bigger ones. And then I also want to be able to show the development process behind some of the products that I want to be able to sell. So I'm not going to be going to those too early. Uh, they do need proper time and development and I need to make sure I go over details a lot. But I want to involve you in that process when it's at the right time in development. And I want to involve you in that whole process as well down the line when I've maybe found my feet a little bit. So there's an awful lot to look forward to. So make sure you don't miss any of it and subscribe to the channel because this is going to become a very exciting space very shortly. So take care folks and I'll catch you next time. Whoa, 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 whoa hold up. <laughs> I almost forgot to mention that you can also find me over on Instagram. So I'll be posting behind the scenes things over there. It's linked in the description down below. And also if you're into Discord, check out the water cooling server. So that's actually where I'm gonna be most active because I admin that server and have done for many years now. So if you wanna pop by and have a chat, that's the place. And also it's a great community. Loads of people who know an awful lot about water cooling and modding. I think you'll really enjoy it. So take care folks. And this time I'll catch you next time for real. Ooh, dramatic lighting transition.